And this reminds me of a, an interesting um, picture that you have in your book, Chris, that I'll show here. Yeah. So the, there's, we're looking at, the reason we're looking at this slide is because it, and I'm, I'm, think, I'm pausing here, uh, Paul, because I'm thinking about the people that would just be listening to this. So we have a picture of a, a little boy who, I don't know, he must be, you know, seven or eight years old or something like that, who's smoking a cigarette, which is, you know, we would all just, we were, you know, almost any parent or anybody would, uh, would, would be stopped dead in their tracks if they saw that. Um, and then to the, to the right of that, we see a little tiny boy who's probably two, who's, you know, roughly, um, who's, you know, eating from a big plate of, uh, French fries. And of course, you know, everybody would think that, that, you know, the, the kid eating the French fries is, that's kind of normal. We just think of that as, as rather normal. But the um, but both of these the cigarette cigarettes when you burn them when you burn tobacco you produce a chemical called acrolein. Well, guess what? That's one of those advanced lipid oxidation end products, and it happens to be the same advanced lipid oxidation end product that ends up in vegetable oil, and because primarily because that oil is either you know especially when it's heated, but also you will produce that. Um, in your body, you know, because you can break that, those can break down into acrylate. Well, so now I don't remember specifically the exact numbers, Paul, here, but, but the, you know, the evidence shows that you know, like a large French fries, this came from Martin Greutfeld's re research, who looked at, you know, heated oils that comes from restaurants. If you take a large French fries that's cooked in that prolonged, prolonged heated oil, um, that will contain about one to one and a half milligrams of acrolein. Again, now acrolein is the toxicant of cigarette smoke, which is considered the most carcinogenic and toxic part of the cigarette, you know, what you're getting from the cigarette. Okay, so one to one and a half milligrams. So I did the math on this, and it turns out that the acrolein in a, a large French fries is the equivalent of smoking. 18 to 26 average cigarettes or up to 97 cigarettes that are lowest in acrolein. So, but the, but, and back to the first picture. So the, the point is, so cigarettes, basically they cause harm. We think, you know, primarily because they're of their oxidative potential. Now they're, you get these toxicants like acrolein and all these other chemicals, but they, but their primary harm probably comes from oxidation. But that ends at about six months after you stop smoking. So, so I mean, probably be a very short time if you just smoked a few cigarettes, right? But, but when you consume French fries, those oils are going to deposit in your body fat unless you can burn it right away that day. You're, they're going to be deposited in your body fat. And we know that ultimately, as we've talked about, that whatever you consume, whatever fatty acids you consume, in your diet will be reflected in your body fat. And that takes three years to turn over. So what I showed here is that this little tiny boy is poisoned for three years after consuming this big plate of French fries, right? So if it were up to me, um, I think that smoking is fantastically safer than consuming vegetable oils, especially heated vegetable oils like you get in fast food restaurants. That you know where they're cooking these, you know, the French fries in these oils that have been heated for days. So perhaps we'll just clarify that I don't think you're advocating for smoking. It's just we're drawing Absolutely the comparison. <laughs> just a comparison. No, I'm a you know I'm very you know I've always been wanted to be very healthy and fit and all that. I was I grew up as an athlete. I've always considered myself athletic. And um, but but the point is is that. You know, modern medicine teaches us, right, Paul, that, you know, in medical school, we're taught that, you know, the really bad things are just smoking and drinking and uh, maybe not getting any exercise. And that's about it, right? They don't, you know, there's no talk at all about the diet or any of this, right? And I'm just drawing the, the you know, the connection here, the parallel, the, the comparison, maybe I should say, that consuming vegetable oils, to me, is fantastically more dangerous than smoking cigarettes because you know again you're accumulating these oils in your entire body and setting up your entire body for this pro-oxidative pro-inflammatory toxic environment yeah and i remember in my life 
when I smoked my first cigarette, I must've been 12 years old. And I was with my friends who were skaters and they were a bad influence on me. I was also a skater. I wore airwalks and skids pants and I learned to Ollie and I don't think I ever did a kickflip, but I tried. And, uh, I, I smoked a cigarette and ironically, I also ate a hamburger from McDonald's at the same time. Yeah. And, and then I smoked half of another one later in the day. And I midway through the second cigarette, I thought, I don't want to be a smoker. And I threw it away and I never smoked another cigarette, but my family would always give me junk food. And I don't think that they were negligent. It's just, they didn't know any better. Even though my father is a physician, we had TV dinners and he would buy me burgers and I'm sure I ate fries. And if I told my family that I had French fries for lunch with my dad, and I told them that I smoked a cigarette with my friends who were skaters, they would be much more mortified about the cigarette than they would about the French fries. And this is just our gap in knowledge as humans and how many of us feed these foods to our children or don't know that these things are in our foods. And how ironic also, Chris, and I've done some content on this, that almost every baby formula I've ever seen in the grocery store, even those that are marketed as healthy or alternative or goat milk formulas contain seed oils because... We are trying to match the amount of linoleic acid in the breast milk of mothers. Well, imagine that if we're eating more linoleic acid and our fat contains more linoleic acid, then our breast milk contains more linoleic acid. So I believe there are studies about this. You may know the breast milk of American mothers is very different in linoleic acid content than that of indigenous pregnant nursing mothers. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. It's, it's a, a lot higher. I don't remember the numbers. I don't know if you know those offhand, Paul, but, but the number, but just like everything else, the linoleic acid goes way up in, uh, in monogastric, uh, animals or humans. Um, when we consume more omega six, it goes up, it goes much higher in the breast milk. But again, so how, yeah. but, but, but in the comparison, but even that breast milk would is so much healthier than, than uh, these formulas. In fact, in the formulas, you know, they're um, even ones that would start out with uh, with milk. They're removing or or powdered milk, whatever. They're removing the um, the uh, butter or any you know, natural animal fats that might be in there, and they're replacing those with vegetable oil. Um, you know, I know Sally Fallon from the Weston A. Price Foundation said many years ago that I remember her saying that. Um, formula is the single most processed food on the planet. This is what we're starting our kids off with. And, and we wonder, I remember, and I, I think about, you know, um, a number of years ago that Robert Lustig said, well, any hypothesis that you want to proffer uh, about obesity needs to explain why we have obesity in our infants nowadays. I mean, they don't diet and they don't exercise was his argument. Why are they obese? And why are they so fat? And here's exactly why the first thing we're giving them, so many mothers are not, they're also not even breastfeeding. And the first thing they give them is formula. And the formula is made out of vegetable oils and sugar and maybe some refined flours. And then they just throw in a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, minerals and some vitamins. That's what it is. It's single most processed. I agree with Sally Fallon. Single most processed food there is, and this is exactly why, you know, we're we're you know, you know we're causing um, we're be- causing obesity in our infants and our toddlers because of this is how we start them off eating. And there is research correlating linoleic acid consumption in mothers and levels of obesity in children. So this is this has all been documented that yeah. moms who eat more linoleic acid have more obese kids. Again, it's a lot of correlations, but I think that the correlations are so numerous <laughs> and so strong that we cannot ignore this. And I, I guess the point of all this is just that I hope that really tight research will be done in the future so we can put this issue to rest because there are confusions and people will say it's correlation, it's not causation. Exactly, we need to do some solid, solid research to really prove how horrible these are for humans. I've talked on previous podcasts about all the interventional studies in the past, Minnesota coronary, LA veterans. I'm not, I don't think we need to belabor that point on this podcast, but again, the seed oil discussion is, is complex. 